Well, I'm Joey Tedesco, and... Guess I'm in Florida now. Well, it's been a while since I've had a segment on my show called Crossing the Line, where I look at a live-action movie based on an animated show. Like, I haven't done those already. Those don't count. There are many age-old questions, like the purpose of life, the creation of the universe, and live-action Hannibal Barbera cartoons. For the most part, these are adaptations that get the crap end of the stick. I heard an expression that if Disney was classical music and Warner Brothers was jazz, then Hanna-Barbera would be Nickelback. Well, I can safely tell you that you can't go any lower than Flintstones and Viva Rock Vegas. Okay, so I may be a fan of the original movie and of the original series, but there is no excuse for this wide-eyed, creepy, padded-out waste of dino crap. Yeah. This movie's so bad it has me doing dino jokes. But wouldn't you if you were left with a prequel that does the polar opposite of what a prequel should do? This is the Cartoon Palooza review of the Flintstones in Viva Rock Vegas. Well, to show you how lazy this film is, let's look at the logo roll and see the same joke done in the last film. Beat by beat, it's the same thing from the first movie. And somehow the pun falls flat on its face when they advertise its website. So our movie stars are actors from the last film, John Goodman and Rick Moranis reprising their roles as... What? Wait a minute. That, that, that's not John Goodman and Rick Moranis. It's Friar Tuck and a Baldwin brother. Well, at least they managed to keep Elizabeth Perkins to reprise her role as Wilma. Yeah! Okay, so we managed to get rid of almost all the main actors. It, it makes me dread who they could possibly have gotten to play Betty. Hey. what he said. Now this is actually one of the few positive things in this movie. Few. The casting is pretty good. Since Fred Flintstone is modeled off of Ralph Cramden, it's ironic how John Goodman looks like Jackie Gleason, but doesn't sound like him. Here Mark Eddy sounds like Jackie Gleason, but doesn't get the look down 100%. Hell, this Baldwin is Art Carney, who Barney was modeled off of. The only downside is Kristen Johnson as Wilma, who sounds like she takes a shot of testosterone before shooting a tape. She may as well be Emma Stone's mother. Oh my god! And Betty... Come on, just look at her. So as you'd imagine, the story takes place around the time Wilma meets Fred and Betty meets Barney. Wilma wants to escape her life of luxury and Fred just wants to get laid. No. Really, that, that's their motivation for meeting to working as roller girls at a fast food joint. Basically, when Wilma runs away, Betty has the world's least convincing conversation, which ends with her staying over her place. Now, this isn't the first time we see Betty make least thought out decisions, like agreeing to date Fred and bringing Barney for the trip, but then realizing Barney was more interesting, because he laughs funny. You got a really great laugh. Seriously, Betty Rubble, you're a sucker. A smoking hot one, but uh, I digress. So while on a date at a theme park with a block of wood from Twilight in attendance, Fred and Wilma realize they were made for each other. However, Wilma's mother realizes that she ran off and invites the gang to a party. After a few misunderstandings, it ends with, John Show, no! Please tell me you're not doing Wilma's mother for this role. Mel, 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 Mel. Okay, hold on, hold on. One. I'm sorry. Did you tell him he could do the Mel thing? Because I don't. Yeah, it's really not a problem. Do. Can you just be cool? Okay, no, please, Carrie. I don't know what else you've done. I got to be honest with you. We just we had scripted out the thing. About oh, I America, guess you haven't seen America Flintstones playing. Viva Rock Vegas. So, anyways, it ends with the gang getting invited to Rockefellers. Who invites the gang to his casino in Rock Vegas, our title location, which they finally get into a half an hour into this film. Things are looking up for Fred, who really it's a scheme for Rockefeller to get with Wilma and use her dowry to pay off some loan sharks. 
Wait a minute. You mean the guy who owns a casino has debts? You know, the guy with a giant lever that he can cause everybody in the casino to lose their game is in a bit of a debt so he wants to get some money off of a chick? Well, here's an idea. Sell your freaking casino! Is this really the villain's motivation when he can easily get this done? Is this the best you could come up with, the director of Beethoven? Or was this just an excuse to get a little person into a stupid looking hat? So after ripping off Titanic where Wilma's pearls go missing... Ladies and gentlemen, I regret to inform you that there is a criminal in our midst. Now what did you say you were? <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, off the record, th that joke was pretty funny. Fred and Barney are stuck in prison, but Barney is able to get them out, and we've all seen this one. Fred accepts that he can't offer more for Wilma, but after two weeks living with her, he decides he wants to get hitched. They marry, the dumbasses get his legs snapped off for his stupidity, and Betty's still hot. Thank God. You know, going through this film, I feel as if I forgot something. Nah. So the Flintstones in Viva Rock Vegas, and... Actually, it's Gah, Zoo. Gah. Let's all say it together. <laughs> oh, right, I forgot. The Great Kazoo was in this movie. So, why did I mention him? Because he serves no purpose other than looking unintentionally creepy. Seriously, in this review, would it have made a difference if I mentioned that this character was in it? No, because he barely contributes and shows up so he can add to the film's already abundant padding. So yeah, this, this movie's pretty bad. At least the first Flintstones film is corny and it had somewhat of a plot. Here it honestly feels like two shorts strung together in hopes of making it work. Add some bad jokes, freak a CG, and lots of padding, and you have yourself a pretty bad uh, wait, 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 wait a second, go, go back for a sec. Well, now this movie went up a couple of points. Okay, just for that freeze frame, it's worth it. The rest of the movie, forget about it. Now I'm Joey Tedesco, and I got some business to take care of. What? A guy can't put any lotion on his forehead? <laughs>